It is good to be with you once more as we uh, have this YouTube uh, opportunity to worship together. Now, uh, uh, pause, because I want you to go get uh, what you will use for communion. Maybe it's bread, maybe it's crackers, maybe it's iced tea. Uh, hey, who knows, you might even have wine at home and, and want to cause it to be wine, not just grape juice. Whatever the case, I have my little communion thing here and uh, we'll share communion shortly. Uh, first, I, uh, oh, Pastor Gene Liddick at Shepherdstown uh, United Methodist Church in Mechanicsburg. Our live worship is at 9.30 on Sundays. This coming Sunday is the first Sunday after Easter and it is Shepherdstown tradition to have communion on that particular Sunday. So welcome. Let's worship. The call to worship. This is the day when we come before the Lord and worship. We come expectant and hope-filled that we might meet Christ. We pray that God is in our midst, but would we recognize the Lord if he was seated among us? Oh, that we would know Jesus, our Lord, all the more. We come mindful that the Lord is revealed to us if we are willing to see that God bless us today as we share in this time of worship. Prayer of confession that I want to lift up at this point. Oh, no, first I want to sing. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. His cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring. His love in death shall never die. Now, a prayer of confession. Hear this prayer. Let your mind and heart be present to God as I offer this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our, our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us true in faith, in life eternal. Amen. A prayer. Lord, as we've offered confession and have been assured that we indeed are people who are forgiven, when we come of contrite hearts, it is your grace that is made known to us and causes us to know that we are your beloved. Thank you for that. And we praise you for that. For as we have celebrated the victory of a risen Lord in these days post Easter, we, we celebrate the reality of the defeat of sin and death because of our Lord and Savior, your Son going to the cross for us to cause the, 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 the hold, the clamp hold on us of sin to be broken free. And that we have life in you and life abundant unto eternity. And what a joy that is to know so, Lord, that is reason for praise and thanksgiving. We pray, Lord, 
that our futures, our individual futures, the future of your church might be such that we are witnesses of your word, sharing the good news with others. And in this time of, of pandemic, and this time of troubled circumstances where people don't feel connected thanks to politics, but even more so because of what's happened with this ingrained uh, feeling of angst and, and disconnection thanks to the pandemic. We, Lord, need to draw ourselves in relationship and reconnect and have you be the source of that so as to cause us to be united as one in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the prayer for the church, but that also is the outreach understanding that we are to be about as your people. Lord, I ask your guidance upon Shepherdstown Church for a better future for this congregation that is soon to be and is in the past, already in the process of becoming that which you would have for the greater good and your greater purpose for Shepherdstown Church. Now, Lord, there are special concerns that folks have. And as we pause, and they are worshiping you at this moment, hear their prayers. And Almighty God, in hearing them on behalf of another or a personal need or, or a greater concern about our community and our world, Lord God, hear these prayers and act mightily according to your greater purpose for the good of the people of God. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now's our time to share in this communion. It is Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, to whom we pray, through Jesus Christ our Savior, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as our words are interpreted, so as to cause them to be a blessing unto God as we offer this act of praise. We gather in Jesus' name, for he suffered that death upon the cross, that we might be reconciled to God, that we might be at one with God once more. And so Jesus, the sinless one, becomes sin for us. And there, on that cross, his body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us that we might have our sins covered over by his blood. The power of that is such that these elements, the bread and the cup, become to us a spiritual nurture, for this is the body and blood of Christ unto us. Lord, bless these elements and bless us as we share these elements that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ. We pray this in your most holy name. So as I open the cellophane seal to acquire the wafer within, I want to remind us, you and I, that this is the body of Christ, his body broken for us. And our Lord and Savior said to take and eat. And as often as you do so, do so in remembrance of him, the body of Christ. At the end of the supper, that Passover feast, where Jesus introduced this understanding of who we are as his followers, this understanding of this mighty act of his of dying on the cross for us. He took the cup, this Passover cup, a cup of benediction, and changed the words radically, so radical that they have eternal meaning to us. For he said, this is my blood shed for you. And as often as you drink of it, 
do so in remembrance of me. So we do so in remembrance of him and we take and drink. Heavenly Father, gracious God, Lord of life, kind, gracious Son, our Savior, we thank you for this spiritual nurture that enables us and emboldens us to live for you all the more unto eternity. And so we give you praise and thanks in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Transition uh, song, one that I, I love, uh, surely the presence of the Lord uh, as we prepare for reading scripture and then uh, the message itself. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can bear, hear the brush of angel wings. I see glory on your face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in our place. Amen. This is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. It comes to us uh, from the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 22 through 35. A long reading, so if you want to pause and get your Bible so you can follow along, do so. Otherwise, listen carefully. We pick up in the midst of a conversation on the road to Emmaus. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and, and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared! Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them, Jesus interpreted to them, the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, stay with us because it's almost evening and day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread Ah, uh, and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Oh, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and they returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told of what happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of God for us, you and me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, Lord, it, would, would, would your Holy Spirit be such that it moves amongst us as your word is interpreted? Uh, 
by me, Lord, and I ask that those words would be converted into words that would touch our hearts and move us ever closer to you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share the word and interpret it for our living and understanding. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a confession. I start with a confession on this sermon that is entitled, Would We Know Him? That confession is, too often I find myself in moments of lapse uh, where it's an awkward moment and, and I see somebody in the congregation or somebody out the, and about that I hadn't seen in a long time and, and I start talking to them and, and, and I'm searching for some connection so that I might remember their name and be able to speak their name to them. <laughs> One of the most humiliating moments was uh, right after I was married uh, decades ago, uh, my bride and I were in worship, and, and there was Sherry Snow, uh, a good friend, a friend that I had known for 15 or so years. And, and I was going on and on about how, as I was trying to introduce her, how uh, she was a wonderful person, a great friend, and, and I hemmed and hauled. And finally, Sherry says to me, you forgot my name. Oh, jeez. What, what? Oh, man. Jackie was her name. She and I served on the crop walk committee for the Harrisburg crop walk. Oh, we were engaged in that and, and it, it was a special part of volunteer life for me early on in my ministry as a pastor. And Jackie and I became friends through that. We would see each other often throughout the year planning for the crop walk and, and always had great conversations. She was active in her home church, of course. Well, I was visiting at Bethany Village, visiting another person, and there was Jackie. She walked up to me, looked at me, her eyes. I could tell she, she had this flash of recognition but in that instant, she could not remember. And, and as quickly as she thought about it, she also, in the end, ended up being such that, well, she turned to a magazine because she was, she didn't know what to do. She, because the memory loss, the dementia, the, the Alzheimer's were such that she could not function and and be able to, to put together those things. So even at the flash of recognition, it was lost. And so she diverted attention to a magazine and she said, what about this article to try to cover for her loss of memory? Well, we call it a senior moment when you and, that happens to you and I and, and use some other terms so often, not being able to recall the name of someone haven't you felt bad over those moments when you've not been able, when they've addressed you by name and, and you couldn't remember theirs? Dale Carnegie was uh, author of, and, and it, it, they continue to offer the course on, on how to win friends and influence people, the name of the book that he first wrote. And in that book, he, he helps you to understand that if you use the name of an individual at introduction in the very first sentence in response to that introduction, you'll more likely, more than likely, recall the name of that individual. And further, that if you see things around you or see a feature in that person, it becomes a trigger to remember the name of that individual. Well, Clopas and another were on the road to Emmaus. And along comes a stranger as they're talking about the events that happened in Jerusalem over the past three days. That is lifted up earlier in the text in the 24th chapter of Luke. You could read that at your leisure. And in the midst of that, they're depressed, they're saddened, they're heartbroken because their leader, 
whom they thought as the Messiah would bring about a greater future, had died. And what was left? Just let's go home. Now, we're not sure if that was husband and wife, and it seems as though that's, that's the way it's more likely to be. And as they're talking to one another, along comes a stranger. And he interrupts them by saying, what things are you talking about? What things have transpired in the past three days? And as they walk, they rehearse, they remember, they recollect. And as Yogi Berra said, it's deja vu all over again. For there was something going on within their spirits that, that they felt like, you know, it, it, for some reason it felt like to them that they had been there before, that, that there was something about this conversation that, that drew them in a different direction. Oh, Call it maybe Groundhog Day, you know, over and over again. Remember the movie where, you know, again and again, uh, Bill Murray wakes up uh, to ground the new Groundhog Day, and it seems as though he can never get past that deja vu. Yogi Bear, seeing the same thing over again. It's deja vu all over again. Well, revelation would come. Yes, it would. It would come to Clopas and friend as they are with Jesus, as they are talking, and Jesus is sharing the scriptures and correcting their misinterpretation. And they did not understand that this was a missed identity as well, as they were hearing and listening. And, and then there came this awareness as he broke the bread and shared it with them. Their eyes were opened. It was crystallized in their understanding. They were awakened. They could see that this was their Lord and Savior. And they, they were blown out of the water. And they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? We could see this wonderful thing happening. And wow. They celebrated to such that they went back to Jerusalem and told the story, even as Simon Peter shared his vision of seeing Jesus. Well, as I thought about this, I thought about uh, my dad uh, as he had emphysema and, and blacked out at home, uh, nearly died that, that time, and, and he was uh, uh, awakened in ICU, and within a few days, they got him into a regular room. And I walked into the room to see my dad, and he said, I know you. He knew me, but he didn't know me. He, he saw me, he recognized me, but the recognition could not come to cognition. He could not appreciate or understand that, that in this moment of recognition, it was his own son. He could not put that together. And wasn't that the case with Clopas? The Clopas sensed something, but in the end, until Jesus broke the bread, did not see and understand who it was. I know you, but he didn't. And then he came to knowing the revelation that it was Jesus Christ, the Lord. So it's about the empty tomb. It's about the revelation. It's about all of this that are the precursors to the moment of this recognition for the revelation and the recognition come together and cause a new understanding for this one clopus in the breaking of that bread. Maybe you've seen the recent uh, TV commercial from Domino's. The delivery guy's at the door with his mask on and, and she opens the door and she says, it's you. And then I, boyfriend or husband, not sure which, he peeks around and he says, it's you. And that's what happened. They came to see Jesus and they were wonderfully surprised. It's you, oh, awakened. You know, up until that point, they were distracted. Distracted by the events that transpired, 
distracted by their own internal feelings of loss, of emptiness, of helplessness. But then they were awakened. So let's come to application. Would you know him if he was walking with you, if he was sitting with you, if he was at the grocery store with you, would you know him if you were present to him? Would you recognize him? Would it be a moment where you were, gee, I know you, but did he real, do we really know him? See, we get so caught up in the events in our lives that we miss this vital presence of Christ. Olga was her name. Uh, she and her husband started a restaurant and, and, and well, I went there, I heard, heard about it. Uh, I, Olga and I went, in our history, went back to grade school. I went to a birthday party when she was in second grade at her home. And yet, here I was at this restaurant, ready to pay my bill as she was receiving uh, the, the receipt that the uh, waitress had filled out. And I said, Olga, it's good to see you. Uh, I remember a good old day. She says, I don't know you. I, I couldn't believe it. I was... Then I processed and I realized her life had taken a totally different direction. And for some reason, she wanted to put the past behind her and not recognize others or the moments of our lives that we can connect, that we do have relationship. And so we protect our egos and we miss out. We miss out on the potential. If we are open to God, if we are open to one another, what potential there is for us to be awakened to God's grace, to God's love, and to see the face of Christ in others. See, that's, that's the wonderful, the wonderful message of this salvation that we have, that we see Christ in others that we would know him through others, not just by the power of the Holy Spirit, but by knowing and seeing. Because who knows? They may be visitors unaware, messengers of the living God that have caused us to see and have new understanding. What I'm telling you is, let's draw close, seek relationship so that we might truly know him. This is why we worship, to draw close to our Lord, to fellowship with other believers, and to grow in God's grace and love, and to remember. And in remembering, we recognize. And in recognition, we come to revelation. And then we truly know him. Thank God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May we grow in your grace and love and come to a new recognition of you working in our lives. I ask this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.